I figured out a thing. With the recent update of D&D in Foundry with version three, they introduced a thing called dynamic tokens. And for the life of me, could not figure out how to make them show up. And then I realized mostly it's a sizing thing. And so I thought I would share with you one, a template so that you can just do it on your own and you don't have to like struggle like I did, but two, uh, just show you how to use it. This dynamic token thing, I think is going to be a version 12 iteration or whatever. Um, so I think that's why they teased it with the new D and D stuff. I don't know if it is available to any other tabletop games, just know that it's available for D&D. So here's what it is. So here we have Rowan. He's um, dead because I keep hitting him. But essentially down here, um, I've already hit him on the right. So when he gets HP back, his ring glows green. When you hit him, it's red. <laughs> That's it. That's the dynamic token. Now, I was wondering why I couldn't see them. And technically, it's a sizing thing. So if you have a circle token, all you really need to do is edit your token size. So all you have to do is come in here. If you have tokenizer, it's even easier. You come in here, unlock your layer and make it smaller. Maybe not that small. Hit apply. And there you go. Now you can see the ring is in the background. Now, obviously you could play around with this forever, but um, I've created a, a little thing you can use. I'm gonna put a link to my website down below that will lead you to where you can download this little template. Literally, it's just a circle. <laughs> it's free. Go ahead and we're gonna upload that image. I literally called it dynamic token template. And look, it put a circle on it. Wow. You want to make sure that everything is inside the circle, okay? If it's not inside the circle, then you won't be able to see the ring. The ring is pretty much that circle. We're gonna turn that off so you can't see it. And then we're just going to, cause it'll keep this circle mask for us. And then we will take this guy and we will just make him a little bigger. Actually, we should use the other image. So let's pop that back in here, drop it down below. Get rid of this and make it smaller. Now we can adjust this as well. Just so I can't see the red line. Although you can just hide the red line as well by hitting this little eyeball button. Then we'll hit apply. There you go. Now he fits inside the token. And you can turn on dynamic tokens by going to the token section, going to appearance, and then dynamic ring. And you want this button checked. And then you can change all sorts of things in here, like the ring color. And then this one will change to this white color. So now I've got the pulse on. Um, so it slowly pulses. It's it's got a radiant or a gradient and it has technically it has a background wave, but you can't see the background on him. Um, so you want to make sure the scale is one. You can adjust this scale and that will adjust the ring. Um, but the uh, smaller you go, the less you can see. So the template I'm giving you is set up for one. Now when we hit him and when you hit him, no. Oh my God, no. Oh, we got hit and it's turned red. There you go. <laughs> the other way to do it to make kind of cool pop out tokens is, is to um, use a different editing software, like an image editing software. A lot of people use GIMP and I'm sorry, I can't use GIMP for my work related stuff. So I've never gotten proficient enough in GIMP to show you how to do it. I am proficient enough to show you in Affinity Designer. And if I had Adobe, I could show you in Adobe as well. But I think as long as I show you the general concepts in Affinity, you'll be able to apply it to other things. If you're looking for a free editing software so you don't have to spend a bunch, I've heard GIMP is very good um, and so, and free. So you can do, and I know you can do this kind of stuff with that software. All right, so I've opened a template, but really you don't need the template. I have, I'll have. i share an affinity template, but honestly, you just need the image uh, more than anything else. And you need to make sure your background is set to transparent. We're gonna find and place the image that we want. So I'm gonna pick something. Let's pick this 
Uh, this cutie, I guess. Uh, we're gonna adjust her so she is in here. But I want her to pop out a little. Um, so it's easier to just bring this ellipse up above her just to see. Now we're going to select the ellipse. So we're in pixel persona, if you have affinity. You're gonna go to an ellipse tool, to the ellipse select tool, and hold the shift button. Uh, do this. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it's better if it's smaller, but that is okay. And then we're gonna go to the brush tool and we're going to select all the stuff that we want to stick out. So we kind of want her hair to stick out. And then we're gonna go to select, we're gonna go to invert selection. That, you'll know it worked because it normally has a ant crawly like line on the outside. And then you're just gonna make sure you're on the picture, you have to make sure that this image is rasterized. So you go ahead and hit rasterize. That'll put it in the pixel persona so that you can hit the delete button and then it will take all of that away. And then we'll go up to the top again, hit deselect. I am gonna transform this just a little bit. So I'm going back to my move tool. More is better in this case. So if you can see the little bit of the transparent background, that's okay. Then we're just gonna hide the ellipse and the template and export her as this. So here we go, here's her character sheet. Open it up, change her portrait. So now I can have the regular image here, but for her token, I'm going to put in this circle one. Get rid of that apply. Now we will also turn on dynamic rings. Dun, dun, dun. Make sure it's at one. Update token. Drag her. Where did she, where did she go? She is. Drag her in here. And there you go. She's got her own dynamic ring. You can also do the masking right inside tokenizer but it is a pain and I actually tried to do it with this one, I'll show it off. So this guy has wings and it looks pretty good, you know, but you can tell um, if you look real close that the edges are not quite right. <laughs> so here's Ariel, get Dr. V out of here. Here's Ariel, um, in tokenizer itself, we're going to copy the image from over there, over here, we can add the template. Now I know what to do. We're going to this guy up, but hide that so we can just have the circle. Now we need to adjust it. I'll duplicate the picture and then you'll hit this little mask button and you'll hit this little pencil and then you can mask what you want shown. So most of his upper body, I think, is in it. So you're gonna use the scroll wheel to make it bigger. So we'll do that real fast. We don't have to do anything on the bottom because this is mostly for the wings to pop out. Good enough, you're gonna hit apply. <laughs> and then you're going to select the layer that you want to be masked with this, which is zero. You can see the layer number on the left. So that's zero. So now his wingies will pop out. Um, and that's, um, that's that. So then if we hit apply, his wings pop out. And you can tell a little bit that it's, oh, I like definitely didn't fix this right there, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just not efficient, but you can do it right in tokenizer. You don't even need other software. So that's it. That was the only thing I had to go over today. So hopefully um, you enjoyed this. I have some more videos on the way. <laughs> and by the time this is out, I will actually be doing um, a live stream right now. I'm pretty sure. So go check that out and I will see you guys in the next one.
the next one. Bye.